Welcome to Rams Up, a Los Angeles Rams podcast. We are a proud member of the Pigskin Podcast Network. We cover other SoCal sports news of interest, but we're mostly about your Los Angeles Rams. I'm your host, Mark. Let's get to it. Welcome back, Ram fans. Season 2, Episode 26 of Rams Up, your Los Angeles Rams podcast. Two things we're bringing you here today. One is a look at the top 20 players in the NFC West, and I'm going to focus on the cap hit of each of these players, how teams in the NFC West are getting hit on their cap by their top players. A little bit of a different spin on that. And I'm also going to take a quick look at the Hall of Fame nominations, the semifinalists for the seniors and the coach contributors. I'm going to make my recommendations for the next cut down on that. If you missed it last week, we had a YouTube drop. I took a different take on who the best quarterback in the NFL is to focus on who would you want as your quarterback, if you're trying to win a Super Bowl in the next two years on a randomly good NFL roster. So take a look at that if you want to. And we have a couple more in the pipeline. One, I'm going to do a follow-up to Cameron De Silva's great article on what seven Rams have something to prove. And then we'll have one on famous Ram duos. When you think of Deacon Jones, who else do you think of? That'll be a lot of fun. And as we get closer to training camp, hey, it's only a couple weeks away, we will be focusing on that. Next week, we'll be talking about the big questions the Rams have to answer. What are our big concerns? What are the highlights of this roster? What do we like about it right now? What are we maybe a little bit concerned about? And we'll take a hard look at the Rams that are returning from injuries and how are they progressing. Hey, I wanted to briefly touch on this land Stan Kroenke is buying up in Woodland Hills. He bought the Promenade Mall, and now he has bought the Anthem Blue Cross building across the street. So he owns a significant piece of land there in Woodland Hills, bounded by by Oxnard and Irwin and Topanga Canyon and Canoga. Pretty familiar with that area. It's right near the Warner Center. There's a Marietta Hotel across the street. My first full-time job was in Woodland Hills, Nothing official yet, but it appears that this is going to be the future site of the Rams headquarters and a training facility. One of the advantages of this area is it's 20 miles to Malibu over Las Virginas Canyon there. What a beautiful drive that is. That's actually where the TV show MASH was filmed. And it's also a short drive to Calabasas where a lot of players live. 21 miles to the Thousand Oaks facility, although that will become overcome by events irrelevant at some point, and 28 miles to SoFi. The one thing about Woodland Hills, though, it is a very warm area. It heats up pretty good in the summer. That would be my only concern, but nice area and freeway close, that's for sure. Richie Incognito, 2005 draft pick by the Rams, third round, 81st overall, has retired. He played five years with the Rams, had a somewhat troubled career, especially early on was considered a dirty player, got his name dragged through that Jonathan Martin bullying scandal, but seemed to straighten up his act later on. Very good offensive lineman. He had some memorable moments with the Rams, not all of them good. Remember Steve Spagnuolo finally just said, we've had enough of you, Richie, and they released him. But he got it together and had a nice career, so he is finished retiring as a Raider. Hey, last week's episode, we had a good segment on the Lakers. My special assistant and Laker insider was on for about 20 minutes to discuss all things NBA and the Lakers. Someone commented on that, hey, who cares about the Lakers? Uh, Reality check here. The Lakers are perhaps the third most popular sports franchise in the world behind Manchester United and the New York Yankees. So keep that in mind. Jimmy G trade forthcoming by the end of July. A lot of people are predicting we'll have to see. 
and a little spat between Lamar Jackson and Bernard Pollard. Pollard, a safety that played for the Texans and Ravens, among other teams, and Pollard was calling out Lamar's ability to make all the throws, and Lamar responded, I had to Google you to figure out who the heck you were. You know, I'm taking Team Lamar on this one. Bernard Pollard, I have a little bone to pick with him. He's the one that had the dust up with Steven Jackson back in the day. Steven Jackson, one of my favorite players all time. And uh, yeah, Pollard, not a good look for you. Wasn't a good look when you took swings at Steven Jackson. It's not a good look now. Taking verbal swipes at a Baltimore Raven. Should be a beautiful week in Los Angeles for the All-Star Game at Dodger Stadium. Mookie Betts, Trey Turner, Otani and Trout from the Angels both there. Gonsolin and Kershaw on that All-Star staff. And no Freddie Freeman. Crazy. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. Leads the league in hits last time I checked. Fourth in average, and he's been on a tear recently. Corey Seager will return to Dodger Stadium for that game as an American League All-Star representing the Rangers. Home Run Derby has some good names. Albert Pujols and Juan Soto. I'll put my money on Kyle Schwarber. Expanded playoffs for Major League Baseball this year. I think that's a good idea. Right now, National League, Dodgers and Mets would be watching while the Cardinals and Brewers played each other and the Braves and Padres played each other. Giants, Cardinals, and Phillies all in the hunt. Cameron Smith wins the British Open. That was fun to watch. Cameron Smith on day three tried to hack it out of a bunker. The ball was waist high. He's standing in the bunker, and the announcers are going, don't do it, Cameron. Don't try this. And sure enough, he shot it low and left into some shrubs, and he bounced back on Sunday, or did he ever Kind of cool to see him win. And that brought up a golf pet peeve that I wanted to sneak in here, courtesy of my special assistant. These guys that yell right after a tee shot, especially get in the hole and (laughs) various other things, I don't get it. If I'm there, I'm just maybe a little bit of clapping. A lot of these guys will cheer and scream as the ball fades right 20 yards out of bounds. Maybe wait a little bit before you cheer, huh? I don't know. Kind of ridiculous in my opinion. It's just become a tradition. Every tee shot, 200 people screaming at the top of their lungs. I don't get it. One final thing before we move on. Our Max Muncy watch. Max actually had a nice week. In the Wednesday night rally, Dodgers down 6 nothing, came back to beat the Cardinals. He had four walks on 34 pitches and had a sacrifice fly that tied the game. So no official at-bats, four walks, and an RBI. And then Saturday night against the Angels, a three-run home run. So Max now has nine home runs and has raised his average to 160 at the All-Star break. Back in a second. Welcome back, Ram fans. You know, a popular topic for a lot of team-specific podcasts is, hey, let's rank our top 10, top 15 players, that type of thing. What I wanted to do was rank the top 20 players in the NFC West. Now, the order here is going to be somewhat arbitrary. I try not to be biased towards the Rams, and sometimes that results in the reverse happening. But I wanted to walk through these top 20 guys I came up with. And again, don't get spun up about the order. It's really difficult. Try this yourself and you'll see what I mean. First, I'm going to mention some honorable mentions. That would be Jamal Adams of the Seahawks, making $9 million a year. And also one of the things I want to focus on here is the salary of these guys. These numbers I'm giving you, by the way, are the cap hit for each player. That's going to kind of be the end game here that I'm working towards. Tyler Lockett just missed the cut. He's making $10 million a year. 
Puna Ford, the defensive lineman for the Seahawks, $10 million as well. Rodney Hudson, the center for the Cardinals, $12.5 million. And I have Ashawn Robinson in this group at $9.5 million a year. So counting up from 20 to number one, this is what I came up with. Number 20, Bud Baker of the Cardinals. He's a cap hit of $15 million. Leonard Floyd of the Rams, number 19. $8 million a year. DJ Humphreys of the Cardinals, offensive lineman, $19 million. Number 17, our own Rob Havenstein rhymes with Frankenstein. Just remember that. $9.5 million cap hit. Underrated player. Makes me feel so much better about our offensive line. Andrew Whitworth stepping aside. Rob Havenstein, the new leader of that group. Number 16, J.J. Watt of the Cardinals at $16 million a year. That's his cap hit. And number 15, number 15, Eric Armstead of the 49ers. Top-notch run defender has really developed into a great player. Number 14, Bobby Wagner of the Rams. Get this, $2.5 million cap hit. How's that for value? Now, obviously, he would have been a top three guy a few years ago. Maybe I have him a little low, but I have him locked in at number 14 for better or worse. Number 13, Jimmy Ward of the 49ers, $13 million hit. Number 12, DK Metcalf of the Seahawks, looking for that second contract. He's still making just $4.3 million a year. Seahawks getting some value there. Number 11, Kyler Murray of the Cardinals, $11 million cap hit. And he'll be making more down the road here, I think. Cardinals going to have to do something for him. At number 10, I have our own Matthew Stafford, the quarterback for the Rams, $13.5 million cap hit. Tenth best player in the division, probably top three as far as most valuable. Number nine, Nick Boza of the 49ers, another guy that's about to get paid $11 million a year cap hit. Number eight, another 49er, Greg Kittle, the tight end. Hard to argue with that. Tight ends don't get the recognition they deserve, but he's a great tight end, top three for sure. And we're on a run of four straight 49ers here. Number seven, Fred Warner, $8 million cap hit. Now, from what I have read, he did not have the best of years last year, so maybe he'll bounce back a little bit. Probably would have been top three or four the year before, but right now I have him at number seven. And the fourth 49er in a row, number six, the left tackle, Trent Williams. $14 million a year cap hit. Number five, DeAndre Hopkins of the Cardinals. $17 million cap hit. And then our own Cooper Cup. I know, I know, he should be number two, perhaps. You're going to get really mad when you hear I do have at number two. Again, this is my reverse psychology working on me trying not to exhibit over-favoritism towards the Rams. Cooper Cup, number four, an $18 million a year cap hit. Number three, Jalen Ramsey, $23 million a year cap hit. And number two, maybe I should flip him in Cup, Debo Samuel. But if you look at Samuel's, the percentage of offense that he generates for the 49ers, that's why I have him so high. Who's a better receiver? I'd rather have Cooper Cup. You got to give Debo a nod here for the amount of offense he generates for his team. $5 million cap hit. So here's another guy on a divisional rival that needs to get paid. And number one, you guessed it, Aaron Donald, a $24 million a year cap hit. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about as a follow on to that is how much money, how much of a cap hit each of these teams is taking for their top players. We've heard all about the Rams being top-heavy, and it's true, they are. Of these top 20 players, seven are Rams, seven are 49ers, five are Cardinals, and one is a Seahawk. So let's get the Seahawks off the table here. They got one guy, DK Metcalf. They're paying him $4.3 million a year, at least that's his cap it. So push that aside. The Cardinals, their top five guys, 
cap hit of $78 million altogether, and that's before Kyler Murray gets paid. That's an average of $15.6 million per player cap hit-wise for those five guys. The 49ers, seven players account for a $69.5 million in cap hit, an average of just under $10 million a player, and the Rams, their seven, accounting for 98.5 in cap hit total, an average of just about $14 million a player. So the Cardinals, their five guys, are actually paying at a higher rate per player, getting hit on the cap more per player than the Rams are. Rams just have better players. But what's really interesting is the 49ers. People kind of overlook the trouble they are in salary cap-wise Seven players accounting for $69.5 million in cap hit. But you know what? We're not counting one guy. We're not counting Jimmy G. He's a $27 million cap hit, which is why they need to trade him or just let him walk. Of course, when he does, that's when we'll see Boza and Samuel get paid. It'll probably add up close to what Jimmy's making. So it'll probably end up being seven players making perhaps even more than that 69.5 because Jimmy's not in this top 20. Probably going to talk about seven players making closer to 80 or 90 as far as the cap hit goes. 49ers will be in a very similar top-heavy situation that the Rams are. Problem is, I don't think they draft nearly as well. They cannot fill out the bottom of their roster as well as the Rams have over recent years. So that's my top 20. Again, don't get stuck on the order here. I think it's accurate enough for this purpose, demonstrating how top-heavy each of these teams are, excluding the Seattle Seahawks, of course, and how the Rams actually might be in better shape, despite having so much money dedicated to their top seven players. The action never ends at DraftKings Sportsbook, especially this summer. Right now, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving new customers a risk-free bet for up to $1,000. And looking for something to bet on? Look no further than the Dodgers in the month of July. They get the Cubs, Cardinals, Angels, and Giants all coming up. It doesn't get much better than that. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TPPN. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's promo code TPPN. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. The Pro Football Hall of Fame has announced their 25 senior semifinalists and their 29 coach contributor finalists and their 25 coach contributor finalists. So the next cut is July 27th, just around the corner. They'll cut down to 12 in each category. Then August 16th, they will select up to three seniors and August 23rd, one coach contributor. So right now I'm going to tell you who I think the 12 seniors should be in that first cut down. I'll go through the 25 here real quick. Ken Anderson, longtime quarterback for the Bengals, 42nd all-time in passing yards. I'm going to say no to that. Remember Maxie Bond? He was one of the guys included in that Washington Rams eight-player trade. At the time, one of the biggest trades in NFL history, draft picks included as well. He was a nine-time pro bowler. I'm going to say yes to Maxie Bond moving on. Mark Clayton, the wide receiver with the Miami Dolphins. Clayton benefited from playing on some very good teams with Dan Marino. He had 18 TDs in 1984, but he ended up with 96 more yards than Ricky Pearl. So I'm going to say no to Mark Clayton. Roger Craig, I think he was a great player, 
good in the passing game and the running game, but I think he just benefited from being on an extremely good team, several extremely good teams, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, all those guys around him. I'm going to say no. Laverne Dilwig. No, you have never heard of Laverne Dilwig. He was named to the NFL's all 1920s decade team. He's only one of two players on that all-decade team that is not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Consensus All-Pro five consecutive years, a four-time unanimous All-Pro, and this is a guy who had a real job, too. He would go straight from his law office to the football field, three-time champion with the Packers, and I know these old-school guys, most of us have no idea who they are, never got to see them play, but I'm going to say yes to Laverne Dilwig. Randy Gratishar, the great Bronco linebacker, you know, he just misses the cut in my mind. He had various Defensive Player of the Year awards, but there were a lot of great linebackers in his time. You know, I could be wrong on this one, but I'm saying no to Randy Gratishar. Next up, Lester Hayes. Contributed to two Raiders Super Bowl wins. One-time All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler. I think he is acknowledged as being one of the better cornerbacks of his time. If not, well, he's probably a top two or three cornerback from his era. I'm going to say yes to Lester Hayes. Chris Hinton, great offensive lineman for the Colts. Two-time first-team All-Pro. This guy's got a ton of awards. Three times second-team All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler. I'm saying yes to Chris Hinton. And what you got to remember is some of these guys that played on franchises that maybe weren't in the limelight during that time, I don't think we should ding them for that. We shouldn't reward guys just for being on great teams. And that's why I said no to Mark Clayton and Roger Craig. And that's why I'm saying yes to Chris Hinton. Now, Chuck Howley, the next guy up, Super Bowl champion with the Cowboys, Super Bowl MVP, Super Bowl V. Five-time first-team All-Pro. This guy's got a ton of awards. Real hardcore football player. And yeah, it may may seem like I'm contradicting myself. I'm saying yes to a cowboy, but this guy deserves it. Cecil Isbell. One of the better passers in a run-happy era back in the day. Saying no to him. Joe Jacoby, one of the Hogs. Three-time first-team All-Pro. Four-time Pro Bowler three-time Super Bowl champion on the 1980s All-Decade team. I'm surprised he's not in already. Yes, to Joe Jacoby. And this next guy is kind of special to me, Billy White Shoes Johnson. Now, when you talk about great kick returners in the history of the NFL, everybody's going to mention Billy White Shoes Johnson. And for that reason alone, he belongs in the Hall of Fame. Mike Ken played his entire 17-year career with the Falcons. Started every one of the 251 NFL games he played in. Falcons franchise record for games started and games played. First team all NFL player in 1983. Three-time first team all NFL player. Three-time first team all pro. Saying yes to Mike Ken, another guy. Played on a franchise that didn't do much during his tenure, but he deserves it. If he was on the Cowboys, he'd be in the Hall of Fame already. Another one that uh, was really a tough call here, Joe Klecko, NFL Defensive Player of the Year in 1981. A great pass rusher. I'm going to say no, though, and I'm also going to say no to another guy that was right on the cusp, Bob Kuchenberg, the Dolphins, two-time Super Bowl champion, Saying no to Kuchenberg kind of falls in that Randy Gratishar category. Great linebacker, but there were so many of them. George Coons, one of the premier offensive linemen of the late 60s, early 70s. I'm saying no to him. Jim Marshall, one of the Purple People leaders on the Vikings. Same number of sacks, 130.5 as, remember the old Ram Coy Bacon not talking about Coy Bacon getting into the Hall of Fame. Marshall benefited from playing alongside Carl Eller and Alan Page. He was the third of four cogs in that Vikings defensive line, but I'm saying no to Jim Marshall. Clay Matthews Jr., 
Very good linebacker, but again, there were plenty of them. I'm saying no. Eddie Meter, the old Rams cornerback, two-time first-team All-Pro, three-time second-team All-Pro on the 1960s All-Decade team, one of the best cornerbacks for a long time, yes to Eddie Meter. Stanley Morgan, the old Patriot wide receiver, consistent and productive, but not special enough in my mind for the Hall of Fame. Tommy Nobis, all-decade team in the 1960s. Tommy Nobis is the guy that, if you read about him and watch film on him, if you can find it, or listen to some interviews from some of his teammates, this is a pure old-school football player. He was the leader of that Falcons team from the linebacker position. I'm saying yes to Tommy Nobis. Ken Riley, special cornerback for the Bengals, but not special enough in my mind. I'm saying no. Sterling Sharp, you know, he had a short career, but man, it was crazy productive. Three-time first-team All-Pro. And I'm saying yes. Yes to Sterling Sharp. I'm saying no to Otis Taylor. Nice career, explosive player, but 134th on the all-time receiving charts. No to Otis Taylor. You know, Everson Walls, he's a guy that, you know, you might be tempted to say, oh, he was on the Cowboys. That's the only reason we know about him. But he was the three-time NFL interception leader. 57 career interceptions, tied for 13th. I thought it would be higher, but great cornerback. I'm saying yes to Everson Walls. So there are my 12 seniors, and on to the coach contributors. I'll tell you who the 12 guys that should move on real quick. No arguments, just a list. Bud Adams, Rune Arledge, Don Coriel, Mike Holmgren, Robert Kraft, Art Modell, Dan Reeves, Art Rooney Jr., Jerry Seaman, the referee, Mike Shanahan, Amy Trask, breaking the glass ceiling there, and Jim Tunney, another referee, but... I'm going to tell you, there's one guy in this group that better get in. And I know a lot of people are already arguing for this. He should have been in years ago, and that's Don Coriel. They're going to end up picking one guy from this group. Dang, it better be Don Coriel. He's got some competition there. On the field, his contribution, uh, his legacy is amazing. All the guys that followed after him that basically took his book and expanded on it. Don Coriel, Air Coriel, needs to be in the Hall of Fame. We'll revisit this after they make their selections and see how I did. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. You can visit our website at ramsup.com. You'll find links to all of our episodes and a link to our YouTube channel. And you can also leave us a voicemail from our website. Don't forget to subscribe and give us that five-star rating. It's really appreciated. And remember, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there. Music courtesy of bensound.com and the YouTube Royalty Free Music Audio Library. Crimson Fly by Hama Hama.